Hello everyone, I'm Andrew Olson. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm building an industrial black iron pipe lamp, this time using a glass jug. And on that note, let's get started. I'm starting by scoring the jug on my extremely temporary homemade bottle cutter. Speed is not the goal when scoring the glass. I'm trying to keep an even pressure on the glass as I turn it so I can get a uniform score line all the way around the jug. When the score line meets up, you'll probably hear a slight crunch. Instead of hot and cold water, I'm using the heat from a candle flame and some ice cubes to split the jug into two parts. I'm slowly turning the jug with the score line just over the flame. The black marks on the glass are soot from the flame. That does wash off. It's not necessary to have the glass that close to the flame. The dichotomy of hot and cold and their characteristics of expansion and contraction will cause the glass to break at the weak point, which in this case is the score line. Incidentally, if you want to know how hot the glass gets from the candle, notice how quickly the ice cube is melting. I've edited the video down, but I went back and forth several times, spending a couple of minutes heating up the glass each time I went back to the candle. I used the ice cubes until the glass had either cracked or cooled off too much to have been affected. The separation wasn't perfect, but I decided to use the jug anyway. I need to take the glass down enough to make the circumference even and remove the divot and the slight crack that is formed because of it. So I'm sanding the jug with diamond sanding blocks. I started with 60 grit, then moved to 100, 200, and then 400 grit. The 60 grit blocks work great for quickly removing the amount of glass needed to make the jug flush but it also has a tendency to rip pieces of glass from the edges of the jug and leave it somewhat pitted. The finer blocks helped to diminish the pitting. I used some fine wet and dry sandpaper to clean up the edges of the glass but then settled on my diamond hones as they worked better for this process. That little mark is all that's left of the crack I showed you earlier. I also ended up scratching the inside of the jug by accident in a few places. I started buffing the scratches out with fine wet and dry sandpaper, hence the cloudy nature of the glass in this shot, before moving to my Dremel for a finished polish. The Dremel worked out really well. Some of the deeper scratches are still visible but not as noticeable. They almost resemble imperfections from the factory, which unfortunately there are a few of those but that adds to the character of the jug. Next I'm cutting this beautiful chunk of wood for the base. I decided I didn't need the full piece after trimming off the ends, so I decided to cut it in half. Now I have a piece for a future project. I started sanding the wood with a 100 grit sanding pad and then finished it off with a 320 grit for a more refined surface. I cut the channel for the lamp cord using my saw but resorted to cleaning it up with a wood chisel for safety's sake. When using a saw, always be careful. To finish the base, I decided on Watco Danish oil. I had never used it prior to this and thought it would bring out the character of the wood. I'm using an old t-shirt to apply the oil and any lint-free cloth or even a brush will do, but I prefer the t-shirt myself. That orange blotch you see there is part of the wood and not from the oil. The oil soaked into the wood unevenly, which is not surprising, 
so I applied two more coats, letting each dry for an hour or so in between. Here I'm cleaning off the protective oil from the pipe fittings, one, so it doesn't get all over everything else, and two, so I can possibly paint the fittings later on. Next, I'm using this rotary switch in the same fashion as my last lamp build. I will be disguising it behind this water shutoff valve. After removing the half-inch T and the gate from the valve stem, I cut a piece of vinyl tubing that will connect the switch to the shutoff valve. I'm epoxying the switch inside this one-inch T fitting. The weight of the wires pulls the switch out of place while the epoxy is drying. Here I'm using a flathead screwdriver and the Phillips from my multi-tool to hold the switch in place. As long as they don't get epoxied to the switch, everything will work out just fine. This one inch to three quarter inch bushing is necessary to provide space in between the switch and the valve stem. I could cut the valve stem down, and for those of you who wish to repeat this process on a project of your own, and if you don't want to cut the stem down for whatever reason, or are unable to, then this bushing is necessary. I epoxied the vinyl tube to the valve stem. The tube does fit, however, over the switch, snugly, so the epoxy is not needed for that. I am using epoxy, however, to hold the valve in the one inch T. Unfortunately, the threads don't match up between the two. I'll comment more on that at the end of the video. Now it's time to wire everything up. I'm doing a rough measurement of the length of the lamp cord needed to reach from the light socket down to the switch. Once I determined how much was needed, I cut the black wire in the cord where the switch will be wired into it. This time, I'm using these terminal wire connectors for the wiring. These are easy to use. All that's needed is a wire crimper. Here, I'm trimming away the excess wire and stripping each wire roughly a quarter of an inch. Then I slide the connector over the wire and crimp it tight and repeat the process on the other side. Lastly, I wired up the wall plug and the socket to check the connections Fortunately, everything works. Next, I'm assembling the structure of the lamp piece by piece. The cord is fed through the base, and I follow that up by adding the T containing the switch. I'm not epoxying or gluing the pipe fittings together as many people do. I'm tightening them down real tight with a pipe wrench to ensure they won't move on their own. I cut the lamp cord from the top of the lamp to make it so I can wire up the light socket without needing to do so inside the glass jug. I'm stripping the wires about a quarter of an inch again, then feeding the wires through the threaded rod, adding the base of the socket, and finally wiring the socket together. The white wire goes to the silver screw, and the black wire goes to the gold screw. The socket shell is next, and the assembly is ready. I added connectors to the wires at the top of the lamp, but first I have to assemble everything for the jug. This piece is an electrical compression fitting, used for electrical conduit. I'm not using the piece that compresses for this build. Instead, I'm adding a grommet that will be caught between the lip inside the compression fitting and the glass lip on the jug. I'm cutting the grommet open to make it easier to fit around the neck. It's a bit too tight otherwise. Unfortunately, the grommet is also too thick to properly fit between the two pieces of the compression fitting, so I'm thinning it by half. 
With that done, I'm checking to see if everything fits properly. And it does. The nut on either side of the washer keep it in place while also making it adjustable up and down. Connecting the wires and screwing together the last pipe fitting as well as a quick adjustment to the grommet finish the lamp itself. Except of course for the spray paint. I'm spritzing the paint in a sweeping motion to keep it from getting too thick which will cause it to pool and then run, leaving an uneven finish. The clear paint will maintain the look of the black iron pipe while preventing it from rusting over time. Last but not least is the wall plug. Wiring is the same as the light socket. The white wire goes to the silver screw and the black wire goes to the gold screw. And of course I have to add the bulb. And there you have it. I think I'll call this one the half gallon lamp. I think that would be rather appropriate. What do you think? I gotta give a quick shout out to my sister. She approached me one day. She told me that she had a glass bottle for another lamp build and it turned out to be a half gallon jug. Not this particular one. Unfortunately, the one that she gave me cracked incorrectly. There was a label on it that she thought would be rather interesting aesthetically with a bulb behind it lighting it up and the glass cracked up and behind the label and the jug was not only unusable but the label unfortunately was um, messed up as well and that brings me to the the battle that I had with all of these glass jugs I got a number of these from a home brewing supply company the name of the company escapes me. I'll leave a link in the description down below. I ended up using five jugs total, including the one my sister gave me. These jugs ended up being problematic. It could be that I just didn't know what I was doing when I was trying to split them, but the glass on the on these jugs is not exactly what I would call quality. Not the quality you would expect from, say, a wine bottle, for instance. These jugs have little imperfections from the factory, and the imperfections can be weak spots. If you're heating the glass up and cooling it off, those imperfections can end up cracking and breaking and destroying the integrity of the jug. The other problem I was having was scoring them correctly. Now, as I said in the video earlier, you have to score the jug all the way around evenly. This is a great example. The score line cracked all the way around except for this one little spot and the score line is very shallow there. So that's that's just me not scoring the glass properly but the combination of both imperfections in the glass and an incorrect score line will cause havoc when you're trying to split these. The other problem I had trying to split these jugs was the glass not cracking at all. And this is a rather interesting conundrum. I scored the glass down here really low. I wanted as much glass as possible to hide the bulb in, as it were. I spent two hours with hot and cold water trying to get that score line, the initial one, to split nothing happened. No cracking, no breaking. At the very least, the glass, the entire jug could have split into a million pieces that at least would have been satisfying on, on camera, but um, I couldn't get the glass to split where I scored it, so I scored it again, which is where it actually cracked here. But it, with hot and cold water, that second score line wouldn't split either. I tried a third time, and then a fourth time. Each time I tried scoring it slightly differently. 
using a deeper score mark or a more shallow score mark. Regardless of what I did, this particular jug would not break with hot and cold water, that is. Finally, I resorted to using the candle. This particular jug split eventually using the candle, but not in the right place. I needed it to split up top so I don't have these visible score lines down below. And unfortunately, as you can see here, the top score line ended up cracking up into the glass and that made this one unusable. It was an adventure, to say the least, to get these to work out properly. Obviously this one worked out more or less okay, but I had a lot of work to make the glass flush after I split it. If you're an expert at splitting the glass, why wouldn't these split at all? I just, I don't understand. I spent hours trying to get this one to break and it took a candle and an ice cube to, to get it to work. That brings me to my second topic for this build, which is the bushing and the, the shutoff valve. On my first lamp build, the Carl Lawrence lamp, I did the exact same thing. Both of these valves come from the same place, Home Depot. Admittedly, the bushings that I used the Carl Lawrence lamp bushing came from Home Depot. This bushing came from a plumbing supply house. But regardless, on this lamp build, the two pieces did not, the, the threads did not go together. They did not mesh. On the Carl Lawrence lamp, however, if you watch that video, I know it's difficult to tell, but I actually threaded both pieces together. I did not use epoxy on that lamp. So my question is, why did the threads for the pieces on the Carl Lawrence lamp mesh and the threads for these two pieces not mesh? It's a mystery. If you're a plumbing supply expert, let me know in the comments down below why, at the very least, why you think the pieces worked for one and not the other. That brings me to the last shout out for this video which is to my cousin Matt. I called up Matt one day and I asked him if he had a piece of scrap wood that I could use for my next lamp build and he said well possibly what do you need and the the jug as I said had a a label it was for maple syrup I said a piece of maple would go well with that and he said yeah I've got some firewood <laughs> So he milled me up a piece of maple firewood, and that's the piece you see here on this lamp right now. It worked out rather well. I think it fits the aesthetic of the lamp, and I'm very pleased with it. Thank you, Matt, for the, the uh, piece of firewood. It worked out excellent. And folks, if you haven't checked out Matt's channel, he repairs, rebuilds, and does various projects with chainsaws. He's got his own chainsaw tools. I highly recommend his channel if you're into that sort of thing. I gotta thank all of you for watching. Thank you for your viewership. I do appreciate that very much. Please like the video if you enjoyed the build, if you found it helpful or somewhat um, insightful for maybe a project of your own in the future. Please subscribe for more videos. And of course, I look forward to seeing all of you next time.